This is probably one of the, I would say, the toughest tracks we've done it. As in, uh, we've got a shear drop just to Jason's right. Shear drop down there. The track is not the best, but still good. Uh, there's a little bit of cross section here on the track, which is quite technical. It just needs to take it steady over there. We're just crawling down this hill just to keep safety going. Uh, there's a bit here, it's just a little bit technical here, as in because of the drop we have, we just need to keep it nice and steady going down. Little trickle of the accelerator gets you over. That's again. You can see the front vehicle, a little slide there, just to be nice and steady. That, that's the worst bit, once we get past this it's fine. And on the Defender here, as it's a boat, uh, we need to be very careful. And that's it, that's the worst bit of the track. The rest here is nice driving. Uh, there was just this one technical bit to the end, it's the top of a kind of, I don't know, landslip quarry type thing. But look at the drop here. I know the camera's shaking about a bit. That's not my fear, honestly. That's yeah. just the bumps. Nice and steady drive down, and it'll be good. Have a stunning drive up. Again, another one will come up, it's a dead end, but I'll come up here again, no problem. Conditions need to be right. I maybe not come up as far as this, maybe stop at the turning point just below, because uh, that was a good drive up to there. This bit for the faint hearted uh, isn't the best, I don't think, because it is sheer. Especially when it's a year to the day. Yes, uh, yeah. that is. Yeah, I never even thought of that. It's a year to the day to we uh, rolled a vehicle uh, down a hill in Great uh, in Bosnia, sorry. So obviously some of the guys that's here were on that trip. So that's quite poignant in their minds. Uh, so it's all about taking it nice and steady. Uh, speed was a, a, a kind of a factor last year. Uh, too confident. This time we're taking things uh, very calmly and kind of methodical. Um, we are spotting each other around any difficult parts. So I've now got a lot of switchbacks coming up. Uh, again, this is all about wheel placement, uh, cutting into the corners, not taking it too wide. So as soon as you get past the corner, you cut in, as Jace is doing now. That keeps you nice and steady on the track. But if we have to move over, we have to reverse, we reverse. But as you can see there, nicely round. Quite a tight corner, that one. Especially for Defender. Yeah, the Defender's like, it rocks a lot more than the discos. Yeah, it's got a small, uh, and sm uh, smaller, uh, uh, kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Turning circle. circle yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's not getting a great turning circle at all. So again, it's always about, what's, what's Chase here, how he does it? Goes wide, then cuts into the corner. So taking the corner tight, I'll just show you exactly where our wheels are going. Tight, and you can hear we're right in the, the limit of our turning circle there. But that's how we do it. We it's always go wide and cut into the corner at all times. That way you'll get round. If you try to take the corner wind, wide you'll never get round. You see the vehicles in front is they're they're actually more manoeuvrable than the disc and the defender here. So they can get around the corners a lot easier. 
I'll show you again with Jason's line, wide, and then cut in right now. There you go, and easily round the corner, easily round. So those that's not done tracks as before, that's how you do them basically. Uh, you know, this is not an instructional video of any chance, and I'm sure there'll be people out there who will tell us different. Uh, but again, you can see the disc in front. He's taking a wide. This is a tight one. This one. This is a this is a really tight one. So he may have to reverse there. We'll see if the defender can ground. But it is a tight, tight corner. But they made that easily. So Jason, you see, he's come in, and then he's got out, and then he's going to turn in now. Turn in now. Uh, just take that off a little bit, Jess. And then you can see. I think we'll get around here. I think we'll get around. So on the way up, we never made that in one go, but there you go. It's just about knowing the corner and choosing your line right. Every corner is different, you've got to treat them all differently. The main thing is to be in control of the vehicle at all time. Just tickle the revs and touch the brake lightly. No uh, extreme kind of acceleration or braking. Well, we've got to a good bit now. We're coming to a bit now where we, it's a turn, it's a very, very tight uh, corner, and we can't take that. So, uh, we may have showed you that on the way up, but what you've got to do is work around to a turning circle. You can just see the track to my left there, which is obviously too tight to turn around. So, we've got into the turning circle, and uh, we'll turn the vehicle around up here. You see the discos are just there waiting, and uh, then we'll follow them down. It's a great little spot, this. It's been excited to film this whole track, uh, Jace. It's been an exceptional track, and you never yes. drove up, but you're doing the driving down, and it's actually technically harder to drive down than it is to drive up uh, because of the braking. Uh, so we're going to film the whole so you get a perspective of how big this track was and uh, how challenging some of it was. Like you know, like uh, so. This is, I don't want to call it an instructional video, but you know, if you're going to do these kind of trails, this is how you do them. Uh, you know, like uh, nice and steady the whole way. And I know I keep on saying that, but that's the most important thing. Driving these trails too fast, you'll die. It's as simple as that. And all the time, we've got these stunning views all around us, and it's hard. The guys that's driving, they've hard to see the, the scenery because they're concentrating. Yeah, they're concentrating so much on the driving, and uh, so they don't really get to see what uh, the passengers see. And some of the passengers are, are white knuckling <laughs> to do that top bit there. But this bit's relatively easy. We've done quite a lot of these on the trip, so these ones are okay uh, where we are now. The top was a bit uh, kind of dodgy, dodgy. Dodgier than the lights that have been, you know, like, uh, but everything was safe. As you can see, the little beautiful villages down there as well. There's one up higher and a, a lower village. And you can just see the vehicles there. Yeah, that top one's probably more of a ski resort. It looks like a ski resort, doesn't it? Yeah. There's the villages there. And you just go up a little bit and then you see, we'll see both villages in the one's pan. View, we come around the corner, and that's what we see. I'm not sure how many switchbacks we can through, but there's a fair, fair amount. 
a switchbacks on this track. And the elevation went up to it, I, I don't even know what the elevation was, it was, we were pretty high there. We were pretty high at the bottom, like, you know, never mind going up further. I think we were probably about 5,000 5, feet there, maybe 6,000 feet. series of switchbacks, probably about four or five in a row. Look at that bird. <laughs> there it is. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Again, we'll, I'll just show you the line. I'm not going to say anything this time. Uh, Jay, I'll show you the line that he's taking. I mean, take the defender up some of these tracks that take the shed, you know, like uh, your garden shed on the chassis. Uh, because it's so high, uh, there's quite a lot of roll. Uh, we've got heavy duty springs on these and uh, heavy duty shocks. Uh, but it still kind of leans a fair bit, doesn't it? Uh, you know, when you can rent some of the bends. So that can get a bit, if you're not confident, that can get a bit, uh, a bit white, a bit hairy in a way. Bit of white if, ride. If, if you've got any hair. If you've got any hair. <laughs> as we've seen, Jay shaved his hair off last night. And his beard. Now he's like a little boy. <laughs> Fairly wide wind this, this is lots of room here. driving here and you're driving the roads, the roads are stunning, uh, just to come and do a trip here and just do a road trip is a fantastic trip as well, but we wanted to do as many tracks as we can, so as soon as we see a track, we, we try and head up it. Some of them are good, some of them are not so good, some of them last long, some of them don't. This one, is probably a good few miles up that hill, wasn't it? Uh, and then we'll, we'll head back down to our route that we are originally on, and uh, and we'll see what else we find on the way. Here's the next one. No need to say what we're going to do anymore. Chase has got it off to a tee. Yeah, look at that view there. I mean, normally we don't film non-stop, like, uh, one of videos, but this trail is that challenging and uh, that good that we thought we'd film the whole thing and so that anybody else wants to try and experience this, you just need to give us a shout and ask us where it was and uh, we'll tell them. Uh, and obviously, you take the risk in your own hands, it's nothing to do with us. But you won't get anywhere near as far up this track in no. the winter, the height of winter. No, nah, you wouldn't get anywhere close to it. No, you'd have to be on a on an ATV yeah. or a quad bike or something like that, four wheel drive. When you think how far we've come down so far, and then you see where the foot of the valley is, there's still a long way to go on this track. But the guys are driving exceptionally well. And some of these guys hadn't done tracks like this before and are very very little time on tracks, so they've come a long way and with a driving, they're listening to the more experienced drivers and uh, taking instruction for them. And it's been a gradual build up to these difficult tracks. Of course I. Um, you know, some of the earlier tracks, simple, you know, for, for someone who has been on, you know, 
worse tracks, more da more dangerous, more technical tracks. Yeah. But it's, it's been a little, little bit of a, a learning curve, a gradual learning curve, and the lads are particularly dealing with it well. I think so. I think they're doing it really well. Like, uh, there's a few that uh, are scared of heights, and uh, this for them is a you know you got to think the guys we have taken out uh, and where their fears and anxieties come from, and we are putting them into situations where their fears and anxieties can come out. But with support, they're getting through that, and we're having a laugh at the same time. Are they still going to be scared of heights? Absolutely. But at least they've challenged it, and they're, they've challenged their emotions attached to it. Uh, so that, that's a really important thing. Uh, we can all do therapy and then never use the skills that the therapy gives us because we never put ourselves into challenging situations. We tend to avoid them. Yeah, so the only way, I, I believe, is to, is to face your fears in many ways. And that doesn't mean doing things stupidly, you know, like in, and doing something stupid, but it means at least challenge yourself to do something. And uh, because if we don't challenge ourselves, how can we move forward? And some of these challenges for some guys are, are just getting out the front door of the day. Absolutely. Going and getting a few bits in at the shop. Yeah. You know, some sometimes guys don't bring themselves to open the front door. No. Nope. And, and that's a massive challenge to them. So something like this is testing enough so that when they get back home, they think walking out that door, it's a walk in the park. You know, no, it's, it's, it's absolutely. It's simple. a gradual process, isn't it? It's not something. You don't just come and do this from doing nothing. You don't come and do this. What you need to do is you need to, to build up to doing something like this. Because like as Jason just said, getting out the door for some people is the biggest challenge. But if we can get them out the door and get them involved in a group of people of their peers who are just like them with the same kind of fears and anxieties and emotions, then we can actually start to work together to move forward. And it's important that you know, you set these challenges up for that. Uh, and you do come across difficulties on the way. Uh, we're all individuals. Uh, we don't always deal well in groups. But hopefully, they can, you can still have your quiet times on your own when you have to. But the whole ethos of what we do is working as a team together. And are we, do we get it right every time? Absolutely not. But what's... There's no organisation perfect, and you can't get it right all the time. But what you can do is work on all the things that you, you have to improve on. I, th I think it's important to say that this isn't a cure. Yep, it just puts you in the right frame of mind, points you in the right direction on how to tackle what is normally, you know, difficult situations for guys back home. So it, it, it just challenges them. Um, and like I say, it puts them in, 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 a, in a way of, a form of thinking in a particular way to get through a, a, a normal day, back, back at home. Yeah, but what is a cure? What's a cure for anything? You know, uh, you know, all this is, uh, does this float everybody's boat? Absolutely not. Some people might think this is a, the worst thing you could ever do. And, and that's right for that individual. Uh, we never profess to to have a cure for PTSD. Uh, what we want to do is give people the opportunities to challenge their own thinking about themselves. And the only way you can do that is to first get out the door and uh, and challenge yourself to a day-to-day -day basis. So that means if you couldn't go on a bus today, but you get on one tomorrow, you've moved forward. And each one of these steps forward helps you move forward completely. And then it might be that you, you take up a challenge of this, and it may be the first time you do a challenge, it might not be the best experience, but never give up, never give up on that challenge. Uh, it might be that the challenge that you need is different to this one. There's plenty of challenges out there. Just like this off-road driving, it's, it's peaks and troughs. You know, you have good days and you have bad days. Like I say, you, there'll never be a cure. You, one day or three days, you might be fine. Fourth day, you might be in a bad place. You might find it difficult, you know, dealing with general public. 
you know, getting on public transport, um, and it all depends on, on on the individual and what sort of things, you know, sort of triggers you have. Um, but yeah, it, it it certainly helps. This is my fourth driving expedition in two years, and and I think I've, I've gradually got better. It's not been a fast process. I still have my issues, um, but it's certainly been beneficial um, by being challenged, by being part of a team, um, and, and being around guys that are in, in the very same boat, you know, in a different part of the country. I think part of the challenge is being in that team, uh, mm -hmm. and because, like yourself, Jay, you, you, you kind of solitary a lot of the time, aren't you? Uh -huh. And uh, to then go from being solitary to into your team ethos, people, even when we're in the army, people rub you up the wrong way. It's very hard living with a group of guys at the best of times. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, you will have the ups and downs. Hopefully what we do is if the pro any problems arise, we, we try to deal with them then. And again, that doesn't always work. Uh, but we have to face up to when somebody's having a bad day, we need to challenge the bad day. If somebody just says to us, look, I need some time on my own, well, that's fine. But if somebody's just getting a hump for the sake of having a hump, let's deal with it. Why have we got the hump? Is it something we've done? Is it something that anybody else has done? Is there something that can be improved? And I think that's the way forward. We can actually see ways forward rather than just get the hump. We can actually deal with the, the situation better. And I've been working with Jay now for a year or so. This is the second expedition Jay's been out with us. And he's now also been out with uh, Vet Run 180. And he's also been out with, uh, what was the other one, sorry? Driven to Extremes. Uh, driven to Extremes. And he'll get something different from all of them. We, we are who we are, they are who they are. But they'll all add something to the recovery process. That still doesn't mean it's a cure, but it's a recovery process, how we deal with day-to-day -day life in a better way. So as Jay said about dealing with the public, that's a big part of what we want to do. Like We want to be able to talk to the public, go into public situations. Uh, Jay, as he knows, uh, sometimes he deals with things in an aggressive manner. We deal with that at the time. We say, like, what's the point of having the, the aggressive manner? Let's just deal with it. Because in the grand scheme of the things, it's not a lot. And it's breaking that down, I think, isn't it, Jay? Yeah. You know, breaking it down because... Chipping to, away at it. Ah, because to Jay, it's a big thing. But in reality, when you break it down, it isn't. But what happens if, if you let all these little things become a big thing, then it does become a problem. Don't get me wrong, cities have the same problems, but it's not related to PTSD. It's not related to traumatic experiences. All bar, you know, the, the blue light services, you know, they obviously, they have sufferers of PTSD also. But the general public, if they haven't been in some of the situations and dealt with, uh, you know, difficult times when you've been away on tour of duty, um, it's very hard for them to comprehend and understand where we as veterans actually, you know, look at certain situations. Well, this is something that me and Jamie differ on in opinions about, and that's fine, we've all got opinions. There's nothing wrong. I believe a traumatic incident for anybody is a traumatic incident. And whether that be civvies, uh, uh, military, yeah. trauma's trauma, wherever yeah. that trauma comes from. What happens with the military, though, is we tend to get put into traumatic situations more often than not. And uh, that means they're more susceptible to uh, any kind of trauma-related uh, mental health issues. Yeah, it was, it was wrong for me to say to civvies, you know, 75% of the you know, civilian population never experience. Well, to be fair, most people hopefully never have never to experience have to, yeah. a traumatic incident. But we all deal with trauma. Every, everybody's got trauma in their life, whether it be a parent dying, uh, a rape, um, a murder, or an assault. Trauma is different for every single person, and how we deal with it as individuals is different for every single person. So what one person might feel is traumatic, another person may come along and say, well, what's your problem? There's nothing really wrong with that. So it's it's very, trauma is a very individual thing, and how we deal with trauma is very individual. And a lot of military people 
maybe look at some of the situations like that uh, other uh, members of the population get or members of the public get and think, well, what, that, that's nothing. But to them it is, you know, and that's what we always have to remember. Trauma to them is still trauma. Whether we see that as trauma or not, it's completely different. You know, and that's why uh, some of the issues that arise between and the kind of transition from military to civilian life, a lot of soldiers will never see, a soldier sail as an airman, will always look at the trauma that civilians get as a lesser trauma. But I, I think trauma is trauma personally, you know, for the individual, no matter what it is. And you know, trauma can come from way back. I was just talking to uh, Greg earlier on, I, I've got a fear of rats. But it's a completely irrational fear of rats. Rats have never done anything to me. Uh, but I see a rat and uh, my blood goes cold, my the hairs in the back of my neck stand up. And I was talking to Greg about this this morning while we were driving up uh, to this hill. And I remember as a young boy growing up in Glasgow, I went down to what we call the middens at uh, the back of the tenement to take the rubbish out. And a rat ran out of the, the midden and I just froze. And I think that was the start of my fear of rats, because that was the first time I'd ever seen a rat, I think. I'd never had anything. And then incidents happened throughout my life, where stupid things like Northern Ireland, where rats ran out and stuff like that. And it just, I've got this totally a, a rational fear of rats. Now, to somebody like Duncan is in the vehicle in front of us, he's brought up in the country, rats are just part of their life and a, a farm and stuff like that, like, and he doesn't think anything of rats. But for me, I'm petrified. So you can see how the fears and trauma can be different for every single person due to maybe personal experiences in life. Do you see that, mate? Because mm -hmm. uh, I just think it's all different, like for every one of us. You know, like uh, I just think we deal with things in different ways. I mean, I had a traumatic episode a few years ago where I nearly died. Uh, I got very depressed during that period, five months in hospital. And I think it came out stronger. I, I came out of that hospital because I survived, determined to do more. Knowing that my life expectancy isn't, isn't high. You know, I, I have to take tablets every day or I might peg out. So I've always got the, uh, that in the back of my mind, but so that's why I love doing things like this, because I feel that if I didn't do anything, I'm just waiting to die. And I don't want to wait to die, I want to experience things along the way, and have the best experience in my life. And hopefully the experiences that are put together help people along the way, because that's my therapy. So I mean, when I, when I see people enjoying themselves, that's my therapy, and, and you seen me last year on expedition. Yeah. But it wasn't going so well. So when yeah. people aren't having the best experience, I get very, very emotional, very down, and that's only because I want to do the best I can for people. So when I see that some people aren't getting the best out of it, it, it bloody affects me. I can tell you that right now. It's, and I've got no bones of saying that. Like I, I get very emotional about it. And I was last year, and I did, after our expedition last year, I went very recluse, and I shut myself away, and went to bed for six days, and never left my bed, and never ate, never spoke to anybody on the phone, never on social media, uh, just ignored the world. Uh, my family was very worried about me, so was everybody who knew me, to be fair. But you know what? You have to pull your socks up and get on with life, because I could have very easily went the other way. And that's what I think we have to do. We have to take the positives out of everything we do. We have to take the learnings, what went wrong, what went right, and try to make it better, so that more people can experience what you've just seen us do driving down this mountain. And when we're nearly at the bottom now, and we must have been going now for what, I don't know, 20 minutes, I don't know. We'll probably soon see when you get the video and you get it, but I hope you don't get bored with it. 
uh, as Trent and Lon. We might put a wee bit of music here as well, I don't know. We cut some of the talking out. But uh, I hope we've not bored you. But I wanted to show you this track. Uh, you can just see through the trees there. There's the main road just through the trees. So we're nearly at the bottom. And I hope if anybody's want to come and do this track, we'll put this one up on uh, YouTube. And we'll, uh, if anybody wants any questions on it, uh, we'll, we'll give you all the info that we need where exactly the location is. Uh, because this is a track worth driving in, it just, yeah, it's, it's an absolutely stunning track. Uh, and I hope you've seen the best of what we can show you by videoing this whole track. I've done the other videos. And we've got plenty of videos, but I think we'll do this one as a separate video, just for you to, uh, maybe as a teaser for the season coming up. It's a long teaser, right enough. But I think for the people that's donated to make this uh, possible, I hope you can see where your money's going. Uh, hang on. Say again, mate. Uh, we're going to do a left at the end on the main road, mate. So that's us coming to the main road now. So we're going to finish this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our video, and most of all, press that little bell up in the top right hand corner uh, to get not notifications of other videos. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed this track as much as we have. I've talked the whole way down. Uh, I get called budget school because I never shut up. You can probably tell why now. You know? <laughs> so, but there you go. There's the main road. That's the end of the track. And I'll show you the sign just as we turn onto the main road so you can see exactly where we are. So there we are. There's Mark just uh, radioing in the front. We are going to go to the front and lead because uh, we've got the directions. I'm just holding on the now so you can see the road sign as we go around the corner so you get an idea of where we are. Uh, the village to our right is Bu uh, Burera or something like that. I'll, I will get that for you. So there's San Clement the Tau. That's where we are. There you go. Ski resort just here. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and on Twitter at VIA Charity.